Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Jazzy Podcast. And today we have a very special guest, Swamiji. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Namaste, everybody. Namaste. <clears throat> and me and Swamiji actually met recently, about a little over a week ago, when I attended a Kirtan session with Manu Ang. And he's so nice, and he's so kind, and he even helped me to prepare some questions. And we got some surprise questions for you, Swamiji. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Manu is my brother. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, he's so, a very nice person. He's a very nice soul, very enlightened soul. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Manu told me that when he first met you, and it was the time that when he was a child. Yes. Right. Yes, literally a child. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So how old was he at the time, and how old were you at the time? I was uh, around uh, <clears throat> thirty-five, thirty-six. Okay. And he was um, around eighteen or nineteen, maybe. Right. Yeah, or, or maybe twenty. Okay. Okay. Very, very young. Very young. Yeah. Just a child. Right. Yeah, and I'm so happy, you know, from where he has come, you know, and the the journey he has undertaken uh, into into this Kirtan world, and now the success that he's having, having, we are very proud of him, and uh, I pray that he uh, he attains that, you know, uh, the, he can he can touch millions of hearts all over the world with his devotion, with his love for God. Indeed, which is so beautiful, and I I saw <clears throat> and feel it. And... Perhaps a lot of us for Tony's podcast are also feeling this as well. Yeah. So Manu mentioned to me that you, Swamiji, you been in the community or um, knowing Bhagwan since um, you were sixteen. Seventeen years. Seventeen. So yes. what have happened? Could you tell us some stories or what led you on this path from because? You know, we're very curious about the hero's journey. How, okay. how did you start? Uh, actually, uh, Bhagwan uh, was our neighbor. Oh, wow. He used to work in the Indian railways in uh, in a place called Guwahati in Assam, mm-hmm. uh, where my father used to also work. So right. we were neighbors. And uh, he was a very good family friend. So I knew him from the very, very childhood. And so when I was born from that time, I knew him. Right. Uh, he used to come out in our house, and we used to visit his house. Yes. And uh, his uh, his daughter, you know, the only daughter uh, Bhagwan had. He she is my sister. You know, she was she, so uh, we have this kind of very close relationship. Uh-huh. So Bhagwan uh, at that time, uh, you know, he was not a spiritual person. He was a very, very, very kind-hearted human being. You can say right. Uh, very very curious to do something good for the society, good for the for the people around. You know, the the oldest uh, memories that I have about Bhagwan is this that he was uh, uh, he was collecting money for from from people to for a marriage you know for a marriage party for of a of a very poor girl. As mm-hmm. you know that in India and Pakistan, you, know, you also know that in India and Pakistan marriages are a very big deal. You know, yeah, so you yeah. need a lot of money. To marriage of a, a daughter, right. so uh, that family didn't have this money. So Bhagwan uh, collected this money, and I. These are all in our memories. Right. Then we had a club uh, there, you know, a clubhouse there. Right. And uh, Bhagwan used that clubhouse to uh, for this uh, free uh, education to the children for poor people, poor poor uh, children. So these were the works that he was doing. That is what I can remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, my association with him started when you know he was in the field of drama. He used to uh, direct, uh, you know, plays, mm-hmm. and uh, he used to work. He was a, he was a very good actor mm-hmm. and a very good director. Right. right. So <clears throat> when I was around twelve years old, so he chose me uh, in one of his plays right. to play a role of a prince. And he was a king, you know. Nice. So the uh, the 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 story was this: that there is this uh, cruel king right. who used to, you know, uh, rule over his kingdom and uh, uh, you know torture his people, his subjects. Yes. Yes. And at one point, his small uh, prince, you know, who was around twelve years old, right. 
Right. Uh, he, uh, because of the compassion that he had and seen this, you know, sufferings of the people around, right. so he killed the king. So this oh. was the, you know, this was the uh, story. Right. So I acted as a prince and he was my father. Uh-huh. From that point, you know, from that time, I I was a very, very child, you know, like 12 years old is nothing yeah, at the yeah, time. But yes. I felt his sincerity towards work. I saw this sincerity. He was very sincere, right. very particular, and he was very honest also. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, these dramas were very popular at the time in that area. Uh, you know, and people used to buy tickets to to watch these uh, yeah. plays. Yeah, even his even his wife had to buy a ticket to go mm-hmm. to the uh, to the hall to oh, watch okay. watch, it, okay. watch this play. Okay. He was so so honest. Mm-hmm. So uh, this was Bhagwan. Uh, when he used to direct us, uh, I I saw his uh, you know his sincerity, and I was a little bit influenced with him. But at that time, I was very a child. So uh, in this way, we grew up. Mm-hmm. Uh, we used to play cricket, and uh, most of the time, I saw him encouraging us. He used to just pass by, and he used to stop by, and he used to watch our, uh, watch us play, right. and he used to encourage us. Right. So always, he had this you know this very positive energy. Right. So one day we heard that Bhagwan is not going to play anymore. At that time, we used to call him Uncle. Mm-hmm. So we heard that he is not going to play anymore and uh, he has stopped acting. So it was like kind of surprise for us uh, that why he is doing so, uh, you know, people were all, you know, curious to know what is the what is the reason behind it. I also heard it, but uh, because I was a child at the time, it was not that important for me uh, at that point, you know, but uh, people uh, were quite curious and I have seen that people uh, visited him and requested him a lot. Right. But uh, he did not, uh, you know, he did not, uh, he did not uh, come into this. He, he was not convinced at all. He, mm-hmm. he just took a stand that he's not going to work. So why he did not work, why he did not uh, do this drama was because of this, that his master, you know, his spiritual master, mm-hmm. he was in the path of spirituality and nobody knew this. Uh-huh. You know, it's so like, uh, you know, it was like behind the scene, you know, he was, yes. he was yes. searching yes. for God and... Uh, Oh, okay, uh, just uh, I'm telling this part, and then I'm coming to from where this this search for Bhagwan, you know, uh, where this journey from journey of spirituality started in Bhagwan. Right. So, <clears throat> what uh, I knew in my later later years is this that his spiritual master, you know, he told him not to work in this way anymore, okay. not to go after name and fame, but to dedicate his life in the in in the spirit in spirituality. Right. In the, into the love of God, dedicate him, dedicate his life to God, and that is what it did. Right. So now let's come back. Uh, you know, uh, we'll talk about yeah. my association with Bhagwan a little bit later. Yes, yes. But now, Absolutely. you know, when Bhagwan was doing all these charitable works, and he used to get associated with you know these unions, you know, mm-hmm. these unions, and he was so honest and he was so like, uh, you know, big-hearted that in one of the railway strikes he uh, donated all his money you know from the pension uh, from the pension or from the you know the money that uh, that is deposited yeah. he he donated all this money to to in this in these movements wow. in these labor movements wow, wow. but later he found that you know uh, there was this corruption huge corruption in between right. this right so this affected him a lot and he could see the relationships in 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 the world all these relationships were all you know based on uh, on falsehood on lies so that uh, <clears throat> affected him a lot and he at one point decided to you know end his life so he was like you know i am going to end his life because this world is false people are false mm-hmm. there there's no truth in this world right while he was going through this phase of uh, you know of a kind of depression right. at that time he came across uh, the writings of a great saint called swami vivekananda who was the who was the disciple of thakur ramakrishna right. so you know in that he wrote he read a poem in which uh, swami vivekananda says that if your life is very hard and you see that nobody is with you you are completely alone and you have given your everything but you see that you know you are you are defeated. Yeah. In that case, also you should blossom. You should always smile. You should take life with uh, with a stride, and you should always 
you know, look, move forward. You should not never look back, you know, yeah, yeah. though your life is very hard. So this poem actually inspired him a lot. Right. And then he started to study about Swami Vivekananda and then later on Thakur Ramakrishna, who was the, you know, who was the, uh, who was the master of Swami Vivekananda. So when he start reading about uh, Ramakrishna, mm -hmm. he completely, you know, he was completely dedicated to Ramakrishna. He completely, you know, you know, just lay his heart for Ramakrishna, and right. uh, you know, he was he was completely, you know, like uh, means he was completely uh, totally dedicated to Ramakrishna. Yes. So he, then he was searching for a master, spiritual master, mm -hmm. because in in spirituality. Uh, you know, if you want to uh, become enlightened mm -hmm. or if you want to have spiritual knowledge, then this knowledge is going to come to you through a master. Right. Everything is written in the books. You yeah. can see everything nowadays, everything is in yeah. the internet. Yes. But if you read the books, you are not going to, you can become a scholar. Mm -hmm. You can become a scholar, but you cannot become an enlightened person. Right. So to become an enlightened person, you need to go to another enlightened person who is a master right. who will lead you to the path which will, you know, show the path in through your heart into that yes. into that uh, light which is within you always, right. you know, in the, in the, in the, in the eternal light which we call the self or consciousness. Mm -hmm. So he was searching for this master, and at one point he met his master Swami Pavitra ji mm -hmm. and uh, you know from there his spiritual journey started. So because he was a householder and he was working in the railways in a different city. And Swami Pavitrananda ji used to live in a different city, you know, in a different state of India. Right. So at that time, the medium of communication was letters. Right. Now we have phone, we have internet, yes, everything. Yes. But at that time, uh, yes, there was no right. phone. There was only let letters, you know. Yes, yes. So Swami Pavitrananda ji used to write letters, mm -hmm. and uh, Bhagwan used to read those letters, and he started his journey, spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. But this was like, you know, behind the scene. Yes. He used to do all his. Uh, all his duties, all his works, but this was behind the scene right. until the day Swami Pavitranji told him that now it is a time to stop this and dedicate your life fully to God. Right. And that is when he stopped uh, this acting. Right. So, you know, he stopped acting and then, you know, I don't know what happened actually after that. So I was in a school yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but I found that my father used to, because he was our family friend, Right. My father used to visit him and I found a great change in my father. Right. You know, one night I saw my father meditating for the whole night. Right. So this was the change that I saw in my father. My father was completely like becoming devoted towards God, you know, and we understood that this is because of the association with Bhagwan. Something is happening right. there. Right. But at the time I was, a, I was a child, so I mm -hmm. don't have that much memory. But my mother used to go to, my mother started going to visiting Bhagwan. So you know that you know, in India or Pakistan or, you know, in our part of the uh, of the world, yeah. you know, the mothers are very particular about their children's studies, you know, they used to yes. always be uh, with, you know, like with the, with the sticks that yeah. the, the child studies, you know, yeah, always. Yeah. So my mother was also like this. Right. She used to always be with me and always after me that I study. Uh, she didn't let me you know, watch the TV and anything, you know. So at the time, TV was uh, was coming, you know. It was it was coming into the scene. Uh, I'm talking about uh, 86, 87, 88. Right. You know, at that yeah. time, uh, television was entering into into our lives. Yeah. And then people had this uh, had this perception that this is going to break the whole social fabric, which it did, you know, some, somehow. And you know, all the moralities that we have, they are going to all die out, you know. And and that is why the parents didn't let their children to watch TVs, you know, right. TV and the serials that used to come. So my mother was also not exception. So she uh, didn't let me uh, watch those TVs and she was always after me. But after a certain time, I found my mother, you know, she was very like dispassionate about me. She stopped uh, going after me or, you know, like... Uh, whether I'm watching TV or not, it became very immaterial for her. She was very calm and quiet, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, this person, this person was so anxious about me. She was like always calm and quiet. That actually gave me a lot of pain 
though you know the non attachment yes the non attachment that i found in my ma- mother it right. gave me a lot of pain right and i knew that this is only because she is going to bhagwan and this is something is going ha- happening right right and and i had this a little bit of anger for bhagwan you know right now uh, <laughs> you know in my mind that yes. yes my mother is going there and that is why she is becoming like this right. she is not taking care of me at all now it is so uh, you know at that time the neighborhood which we used to live was like a whole family you know this neighborhood this uh, uh, railway uh, we used to call colony so this whole railway colony was like yes. one family you know right. everybody used to attend everybody's house and you know like uh, in 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 in, uh, in this weddings or in mm-hmm. any kind of mm-hmm. you know uh, any kind of emergency people is to be at their side always you know yes, yes so there was a house which was very close to my ma- our house and bhagwan's house in you can say that that house was in between our house and bhagwan's house right this person this person uh, i'm talking about 1988 89 this person uh, you know he had cancer he was detected cancer mm-hmm. so nowadays if somebody is detected cancer he is not going to die but at that time you know when the time that we are talking about that time cancer means death yeah sure death yeah. so everybody was like very anxious now what to do so this man had a had a had a had a son who was uh, who was grown up but he was not married so this person said that uh before i die i want to see my son getting married yes so this marriage was happening you know in our mm-hmm. in our colony yeah and because my mother was so involved in this marriage and everything mm-hmm. my food you know my food was arranged in bhagwan's house you can understand the kind of you know relationship we had with with within our these families yes so i used to go to bhagwan's house uh take food and then go to school come back from school go to bhagwan's house have my food right. and yeah. come back to my house yes. this was how it worked yes. so you know this is and and there was this marriage going on and i was i was going to school and coming back and visiting bhagwan's house for food one day it was sunday and i went for breakfast and i saw bhagwan sitting outside the house mm-hmm. so the wife of bhagwan who is guruma Mm-hmm. she said that okay you two sit here i'm bringing breakfast for you now you know i was a little bit angry you know right, right yeah because uh, i had this you know my mother is becoming you know she's she's changing yeah so i said that with some kind of rudeness i said that what do you do here mm-hmm. i see my mother come here and she's completely changed what happened means what what is going on here yeah, you know, yeah. in this way i i started this conversation with some you know with a little bit of rudeness yeah. then bhagwan said that uh, we are we are searching for truth so at that time I mean i was like 16 17 you know truth these words were nothing for us no <laughs> what is truth what is, yes, yes is it something to be searched truth i said okay what, what is truth so he said that you know truth is what it is whatever you do it is truth whatever you do if you say this that is truth uh-huh. if you do something and you don't say this if you something if you say something else that is false and if you you know speak the truth for 12 years you are going to realize god he said this uh-huh. so i said you see i am a i am a young man i am a young boy and i cannot speak the truth because if i say in my house that i'm going to play my mother is not going to let me go to play mm-hmm. so i have to tell him that i'm going to study somewhere and in that way i have to i have to play <laughs> so i going to say that i going to speak the truth and then i left the conversation and, and and i came back to my house but after i came back to my house i felt really bad you know like i was rude to this man she he is a respected man in, in yeah. our locality yeah, yeah. and i should not speak in this way so i decided that i will i cannot speak the truth but at least i can stop speaking lies mm-hmm. okay yeah so then i stopped speaking lies you know i now if another asked me where are you going i didn't answer 
I just you know, <laughs> <laughs> should disappear. <laughs> yes, yes. So this is how it was, you know. I had a sister who was terribly you know, after me. Yeah. You know, you know how sisters are. So she was terribly after me, you know. Wherever I go, she was like, hey, where are you going in this way? You know, so that my mother knows this and then she stops me. So then I stopped speaking uh, lies mm -hmm. and I just used to disappear. Mm -hmm. So this was going on for some time. One day in the evening, I was studying. Yes. And uh, because of some unknown reason, I was feeling very sad inside. I could not study, I could not concentrate. So I just went out of my house and I was, you know, just uh, moving around in, in, in our garden, in our, uh, you know, this passage. Suddenly my, you know, my, my attention went to Bhagwan's house. Mm -hmm. It was dark in the evening. Yes. Bhagwan was meditating outside his house. And, you know, the, the vice president of, of our organization now, Pradipda, he was sitting in his footstep and he was meditating. And it was dark and a very small light was there. And that scene was, you know, that scene attracted me so much. I could not stop myself. I went to his house. So he was meditating and Pradipda was sitting in his feet and he, he was meditating. So after some time, he opened his eyes and he saw me. So he said, why are you here? That day you told me that you cannot speak the truth. Why are you here? I said that, yes, that day I told you that I cannot speak the truth. But you know, I'm practicing to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. The moment I said this, you know, the moment I said these words, I'm, I'm, I've started to practice to speak the truth. He jumped at me, you know, mm -hmm. and he hugged me in such a way that means I've done something so great, you know. Yes, this is what it needed. Why, when did I say that, it, you know, you have to do it in one day? Yeah. You have to try. Yes, yes. And, you know, the way he was, you know, hugging me and he was loving me, you know, it touched me a little bit. And I was thinking that speaking the truth is so important, so yeah. valuable. Yeah. I was feeling that maybe I'm, I've, you know, like I've stood fast in my board exam, you know. Mm -hmm. This is how the feelings was. If you st stood far, if you stand fast in the board exam, mm -hmm. then people do this kind of, you know, be, you know, this kind of uh, things to you that they come and hug you. Yes. So that day, somewhere in my mind, I had this a little bit, I developed a little bit of reverence, a little bit of respect, mm -hmm. a little bit of love for him and affection for him. Yes. But it was that, you know, that, that, that's it. That's over. <laughs> then in between this time, uh, uh, there was, you know, there was a serial which was, which used to uh, come to the uh, TV, Mahabharat. You know, Mahabharat, it's the two epics, you know, in India we have two epics. One is mm -hmm. Ramayan and the other is Mahabharat. Mm -hmm. So then there was a serial which used to, uh, be, you know, which used to be telecasted every Sunday. Right, right. So at that time, television was like a luxury. So everybody did not have in their houses. Yeah. So we had a television, so people used to come to our house. And because, you know, people used to come to our house, then I, nobody would tell me to study. So that was a day which we all loved, you know, that yeah, people yeah. used to come and, yeah. you know, there was no pressure of studying. Yeah. <laughs> so the moment I started, you know, this television, uh, this, this serial started mm -hmm. in India or Pakistan, you know, that uh, we eat pan, you know, we chew pan. Mm -hmm. So my mother used to chew pan, that is the beetle leaves. Yeah. So. She say, she gave me one pan uh -huh. a and said, go and give it to uncle, that uh -huh. is to Bhagavan. Uh -huh. But I will not go. I said, no, I'm not going to go now. I'm watching this TV. No, I'm not going. <laughs> and she was, go, go, go. So, you know, after, after 30 minutes, there was a break. Yeah. So the way she was like, you know, after me, I thought that, okay, let me go and just hand it over to him and come back. Yeah. So when I went to his house, his house was completely empty. Mm -hmm. And there was this same Pradipda, that man, you know, who is the vice president of International Vedanta Society now. Yeah. He was sitting outside the house. So I said, uh, Pradipda, uh, where is uncle? Come here, come here, come here, like this. Oh, what? Sit down. He is in Samadhi. 
Uh-huh. So this word samadhi, yes. I heard it for the first time. Right. So I said that I thought that maybe it's kind of some kind of meditation or some kind of yoga, uh-huh. you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I said, okay, Pajita, this is a pan which my mother gave. Just hand it over to him, and I'm going. No, 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 no. You sit here. You sit here. You sit here. When he comes, you give it to him, and he will not let me go. I said, Pradita, this this serial is going on. I have to go. No, no, no. You sit here. You sit here. No, he will he just you know yeah, yeah, put yeah. me there, and no, you cannot go. Yes. So that day, that day, Bhagwan had a very very deep samadhi. So what happens is that in spiritual world, you know, it says that you know your environment is according to your mental level. Mm-hmm. Samadhi is the highest state of a human being. You know. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's the highest state of mind, or you can say it's a high state. Yes. Or you can say it's beyond all states, yes. Samadhi. So when a person attains this state of Samadhi, you know, it is generally presumed that nobody should stay in that place, you know, because that place should be empty because people doesn't have that kind of mental elevation mm-hmm. to be at that place. Yes. So but I was there. So when Bhagwan came out, you know, the positioning, the, the, the way we were positioned, you know, yes. we were sitting there. Bhagwan's vision, first vision fall, fell at me. Mm-hmm. And he was like, what? How are you here? Come here, come here. Mm-hmm. You know, he was completely like surprised to see me there. Mm-hmm. Again, he hugged me. Uh-huh. And he told Pradeep, you know, this our Vice President Pradeep Dhar, that Pradeep, you write it in your diary. This boy is going to change. He's not going to be like this. He cannot stay here. How did he stay here? So when he was saying these things, I thought maybe, okay, maybe I will become somebody, you know, like a big like businessman or some kind of big thing, you know, like yeah, right, right, right. having a lot of uh, abundance <laughs> in my life, prosperity yeah, in my yeah, life. Yeah. But this touch that I had, I felt a little bit something special, something different. But then I came back again, yeah. normal. Everything yeah. is normal. Right, right. Yeah. And then you miss a program, Swamiji, right? Yeah, I miss that program, yes. 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 And, and not like these days that you can watch it again. Yeah, now yeah, they, yeah. But that, that, that was not re, uh, you know, re so I missed that program. Yes. So then again, days passed. Uh-huh. Um, one day, my mother came in the afternoon and told me that you go to the hospital and you bring one ambulance. This person who had cancer, he was suffering. Right. It was in a very emergency. So I went to the hospital and I brought a I brought an ambulance and we took that man to the hospital. And I also, you know, accompanied that man with his son and his uh, daughter and son-in-law and uh, daughter-in-law. Bhagwan was also with us. He also went there. Right. So when we went to the hospital, the doctor said that, uh, you know, there's nothing we can do. He's going to live like 10 more days. Right. We take him home, let him live the way he wants. You know, he's not going to live. He's not, not going to survive. So we brought him back. So when we brought him back, Bhagwan t- told me, come, let's go and have tea in my house. So I went with Bhagwan to have tea in his house. Right. And when I was in his house, we were discussing that, uh, you know, what will happen if something happens in the night, you know, if, if he dies in the night, what is going to happen, this and that. These, these were the things that we were discussing. Suddenly Bhagwan said that, you know, he is not going to die here. He is going to die in the hospital. And at that time, I will not be in my house. I will be in the office. So this was like, you know, strange for me. You know, what is the different what is the relation between his being in the office and this man dying in the hospital? Right, right. So I asked him, why? Why is so? Yes. What is the relation between your staying, you're going to the office and he's dying in the hospital? At that time, Bhagwan very firmly said, I have seen the truth. I have realized the truth Mm -hmm. and wherever I stay, death cannot enter. I will go to the office, he will feel sick and you people will take him to the hospital and there he will die. 
so this was something very 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 new to me you know this Right. I was like taken aback. What I'm listening, <laughs> you know. If I go and tell this to people, you know, they will yes, just yes. make fun of him. What is this? Yes. Right. But something within me said that okay, wait, wait and observe. Right. So I didn't say this to anybody, not even my mother. Right. I just kept in myself, and the days were passing. Right. So we, you know, the place where we live is Kohati, mm-hmm. and there is this very you know, like famous shrine called Kamakya, Kamakya Ma, you know, it's a, it's a goddess shrine. Mm-hmm. So every year there is a celebration. Right. So it generally falls around August, September. And when the celebration happens, so, you know, people from all over the country comes to that place. So we go and go and visit that, uh, yes. you know, temple. So one afternoon I visited the temple with my friends. When we came back, we saw that the man died. So then, as you know, somehow I asked my mother, where are you? So I asked my mother, where did he die? My mother said, in the hospital. And I said, where well, was him? Means, where well, was this uncle? Mm-hmm. My mother said, he was in the office. You were all not there. We were all alone, this, that. But the thing is that right. Bhagwan was not in the in the house. He was in the office. Yes, yes. You know that day, it really moved me. That mm-hmm. I know somebody who is so true. Yes. You know, so so true, and you know, at, at the same time, he's so powerful that you know, wherever he stays, death cannot death cannot enter, and that is what happened. Right. So again, life went on, and I was also maintaining a very safe distance with him, and I was going on with my studies. Mm-hmm. Until a day when he came to our house and he said that, uh, you know, we are going to celebrate the life of uh, the uh, birth anniversary of Lord Buddha. Mm-hmm. So you come and you give a speech in English. Right. So I bought some books on Buddha and I read them. I went there and I gave a speech on Buddha. And after me, Bhagwan spoke. So that was the first spiritual speech you know i was hearing yes i was completely like mesmerized by the way he was he spoke about buddha right right and while i was listening to him you know i still remember that i was thinking how did buddha become so great he was a human being like us yes how did he become like he is considered to be god now you know how did he become god from a very you know very human being but I was very, very impressed by the way Bhagwan, you know, presented Buddha to us. Right. And at that time, I realized that my friends in the school, you know, they should listen to this because we we don't listen to this kind of speeches, mm-hmm. and we should listen to this. You know, so after the program, I went to him and I said that, Uncle, if I bring my friends from the school, right. would you say the same thing that you have just said now? He said that uh, you bring him, you bring them. I will talk about Swami Vivekananda. You know this this great saint, this great monk from India. So I gathered all my friends from the school, from the you know from the locality, from the yes, neighborhood, yes. and it was decided that every Saturday he was going to speak. So first Saturday he spoke, mm-hmm. second Saturday, right, and the third. You know, third speech. Right. When I heard the third speech, that day I decided that I'm going to become a monk. Uh-huh. I'm going to also dedicate my life for this purpose. You know, this right, right. This spreading this love, this unity. So you know, in this way, uh, I came to Bhagwan. Right. And uh, after this, you know, after this one day, what happened was. Uh, we used to do mathematics, you know, probably you also do that. We used to play the music and we do mathematics, no? Right. So I used to do, I used to play music and I used to yes. practice math- mathematics. Right. Right. So after I started visiting Bhagwan, right. the music changed from Hindi Bollywood songs. Uh-huh. It became like devotional songs. Right, right. So in one of the songs, there was this line where, you know, it says that, 
he i am in every soul i am in every body so that struck me you know i am in everybody means god is in everybody that means god is in within me so if god is within me then why don't i see him then you know i started to first of all i started to pray right you know that was the words of thakur ramakrishna you know thakur ramakrishna mm-hmm. so i started to pray to thakur ramakrishna thakur if you are in me then please sure. appear before me right. let me see me it's see right. you and then this prayer slowly slowly started into a very you know like very intense like uh, call or you can say intense desire right and it was it you know it aggravated so much that i started to cry i started to cry and uh, please please appear before me and you know i was in a very like very intense state you know where yes, i was yes. praying and please come please come please show me at the time i heard a voice inside me mm-hmm. saying why are you crying i'm with you i'm near you i said where are you <laughs> i am in this uncle this is me you know bhagwan uh-huh. uh-huh. so i ran to his house he was sitting outside his house right i said uncle uh, i had a very different kind of feelings today oh what happened what happened i said uh, actually you see i was practicing mathematics and then i was listening to a song where thakur ramkrishna was saying that he is in every body so i said thakur i i want to know you and i started crying and then thakur told me that uh, you are thakur the moment he heard these words he said you know you don't need any initiation you are already initiated initiation is a process where you know mm-hmm. it's a it's a process where the guru or the master gives you a mantra you know mm-hmm. and uh, in this way you enter into the path of spirituality the, the world of spirituality right. so this initiation happens in three ways one is with mantra right one is with uh, you know with uh, this uh, transfer of uh, of power mm-hmm. you know without a mantra right and then there is a last uh, you know there is a last kind or the or the, or the most uh, I mean supreme one uh, that is you know the devotee the disciple and the master you know meets for the first time just by exchange of you know like vision something happens and the disciple becomes enlightened right right so you know so he said that you know this power has passed to you on its own you don't need a mantra now and then slowly slowly you know a development started to happen inside of me i could feel peace i could feel peace kind of happiness kind of bliss which i have never felt and then this intense love for him started to grow you know which i have never felt with anybody with my parents or with anybody you know bhagwan started to appear to me as if i know i knew him for a very very, very long time you know in other you know other parts mm-hmm. and he was very known to me you know so suddenly this started to unfold you know right, right. that this you know this relationship within him is not new we had this relationship before and he's i know everything what he what he what he does or what he says or you know this kind of feelings i didn't know anything but this kind of feelings was there that i i can understand whatever he he wants to you know whatever he feels or whatever he wants to say i think that these are all within me you know mm-hmm. and i felt a deep you know, like you cannot say attachment but deep love you know mm-hmm. that he is my own yes. so in this way this started this you know my my association with him started and because at the time i was a child i was in in my school so you know my studies were also affected and that created a little a lot of impact you know in 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 my family in my right in my uh, in my environment you know in in the place where we lived in my school but somehow things fell into places and somehow you know some with divine intervention with the divine guidance mm-hmm. somehow i could find my way to his feet and here i am 
you know, oh. Swami Prabhupada <laughs> the person who now wants to dedicate everything for him. I don't know if I've dedicated everything for him, but I do want that each and every second of my life is spent for him, for his love. It's incredible, Swami. So this is how Bhagavan was, you know, you cannot imagine the kind of love we received from him. Right. He was not our master, actually. He was something, you know, something else, you know. Right. We, Bhagwan means God. Yes. So we, we considered him to be God. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I never wanted to know whether he is God or he is a spiritual person, his master or he has this huge power. These were not my subject, you know. Mm -hmm. I just loved that person. Right. You know, this, he was completely different thing, you know. He was not even God. He was something more than that, you know. If you say God, then also he was something more than that, you know. Yeah. And I miss that person. Right. I miss that person. I can I could tell from the way you speak uh, about him and the the, the love of the inner eyes we are speaking of Bhagavad yeah. Gita. Um, quick question. You mentioned that the first uh, spiritual speech you ever heard. So that day when Bhagwanji was talking about Buddha, would you feel like that day the speech Bhagwan was talking about Buddha as if Bhagwan knew Buddha himself and yeah, personally? Yeah. The speciality of Bhagwan was this: that whenever he used to speak about something mm -hmm. or some subject, like he was speaking about Thakur Ramakrishna. Right. So you know he became Thakur Ramakrishna. Mm -hmm. And by becoming Thakur Ramakrishna, he used to, you know, he used to express him. He used to, you know, he used to, he used to, uh, he used to express what Thakur Ramakrishna is. Right. So when he was, you know, when he was expressing Buddha, he actually was at that time Buddha. Not only this, you know, this.